You just got a new defender hole and you're wondering what it does and how to equip it. Well, that's what I'm here for. Hey everyone, Derpy here and welcome back to another Battle Pirates video. Right off the bat, I'm going to say that if you do enjoy this video and it's helpful for you, go ahead and go ahead and share it with someone else in your alliance. If you found it helpful, they probably will as well. I want to begin with briefly discussing the whole stats and then talking about uh, the weapons, armors, and specials you're going to want to put on it. Of course, this is all just what I think is best. I'm not trying to tell you exactly what to build. I want to get you thinking along the right lines and teach you how to decide what to use. In terms of the stats, this thing has an inherent 50% boost to concussive damage, which should be a pretty big hint as to what you want to use with it. It also has various different deflections, which are roughly equivalent to the exterminators, has a defense handicap, so it does not benefit from survival, and it has turret defense, which I think is just a wasted error copyover stat from the exterminator whenever these, these stats were copied over. This shouldn't do anything. This cannot hit bases. It's just a wasted stat. Maybe it should be splash damage reduction instead. Ignore this completely. It has no benefit. It also does have some combat speed. This is going to be a mobile defender, but you cannot control it. It drives around, you can't control it, similar to the Piranha or the Carnage. Of course, there's also a Thermal, which might be useful if there is any subs, like the Gluttony hitting your base. The Harrower in Deep Dive cannot be spotted anyway, that doesn't matter. And it has some repair time. Into the interesting stuff, there's two different special abilities for this hole. The first one is a duplicate or a cap of one, so having 29 million badgers in your base only has this one effect. Has a range of 100, it applies to hostile ships, so attackers hitting your base. It reduces their building damage by 25%, as well as reduces their damage from every single weapon type by 35%. So if you're shooting at a building, you're doing, you know, not as much damage, about 50% as much damage as you would be without the Badger's Aura, which does make this pretty powerful. Shooting at ships is only a 35% reduction, so keep that in mind. Also, some of the enemy holes can outrange this aura of 100, which might be an option. The other thing you want to note is the badger targeting system. This thing does zero damage, and it has a range of 10. This is so that the badger will not stop at its max range of 90 or whatever the weapon is, and stutter, and it will instead chase down the enemy holes till it's right on top of them. The intent of this hole is to both be stationary while you're, tar while you're starting the battle, as well as once you're through the portals, you're not actually done with the battle yet as the attacker. The, the battle's not over until you kill all these badger holes, or uh, depending on the exact use, which I will get into. So this thing will track you down to a range of 10, especially and only if you have its default weapons equipped. If you use other weapons such as Polonium Thrower or whatnot, which you probably should not use, this targeting system will not work properly. Alright, let's go ahead and jump into the weapons. There really is just one choice for this hole. It is the default one that came with the weapon, which is the Grinder Gatling Gun. Deals quite a lot of damage, tier 9 depth charge, linked to only the Badger. What you need to know about this is that it does have a special, a few special effects, which I actually need to move the screen up a tiny bit here to see. It does you know, 125k damage before you before you buff it up, and it has a windup which has two effects. The first one is that it gets way more reload, which is fantastic, and the second one is that the damage increases from 125k to 175k. There you go. As this thing continues to fire, it does more damage as well as reloads even faster. This is just going to go across all three slots. There's no real other great thing you want to use here, and this does have a range of looks like 90. In terms of the armors, things are going to depend a little bit based on the exact meta. If there is a lot of damage from, say, exterminators that do lots of concussive splash damage, then you probably want to have on a concussive armor. If we get another hole that does a lot of missile damage, we probably want to use missile armor. Right now, that's probably a fairly good option with the exterminator's built-in missile, and the other one could be something like an evade armor, D5 EV, if there's lots of stuff we want to evade, or it could be a stun armor, one of this, these ones right here in the blue, and that will help it survive a little bit longer against stuns, although I don't find this one particularly exciting. I would be more inclined to go for D5 EV because that does boost your combat speed as well as does give you a pretty healthy amount of evade. 
although there's a few other things that get roughly equivalent of aid to that. Armor will depend and will change based on the meta, so make sure you take that into account when you are designing your hole. Don't just copy what I've shown you here. For example, if we get a hole that does lots of corrosive damage and radioactive damage, or we have a few of those things in the meta a year from now, you probably want to shift these two armors around here. The first decision you have to make for this hole and for every single one you build is do you want it to move or not? If you want it to move, fantastic, go ahead and put on the tier 9 or tier 8 onslaught engine. It gives you evade as well as combat speed, which is pretty helpful. If you do not want this want this ship to move, then you should put on a sync drive, pick your favorite color, it doesn't matter which one of those at all, and that will make it it matches the slowest speed of the of your ships of your ships in the fleet. So if you have an overlord carrier which is not moving, then this hole will not move either. Keep that in mind. So if you want this to stay stopped, it's kind of near the front of your base maybe, not behind portals, go ahead and put on your favorite color sync drive. If it is going to move and you want to hide it behind a few portals, which I'll probably do with at least one hole, then you're going to want to put an engine on there so it can chase down the attackers after the battle starts. For all the other slots, we're going to increase the whole survival time as well as its damage. The best way to increase survival time, especially against a lot of weapons, although not all of them, if things are splash based, is to use Agility System 4, gives you some stun resist for any pinches, as well as a pretty healthy evade bonus, it's pretty much a no brainer in my mind, if we have a lot of things in the meta with evade. Looking at exterminators, both of their weapons are actually splash, so this is not going to be too helpful against those things. But maybe it is helpful against things such as trenchers, which are all accuracy-based damage. So consider the meta and what you want to use. I think evade is going to be quite helpful, especially making this thing survive longer against, say, a hair we're trying to prep you out. I'm going to use it. You don't have to. To understand the next three specials, we need to look back at our weapon. This is a depth charge, and it does... You know, it is, it is a dumb fire splash weapon. So if you're shooting at someone and they move very quickly, they can outrun all or most of the damage. For that reason, we're going to want to increase both projectile speed and splash, as well as just in general, things such as concussive damage and critical shots are pretty nice. Critical, as well as this windup, is quite powerful because of the deflections on the holes already. If you go from against a deflection of 100,000 from 125 to 175k, you've tripled your damage you're actually doing. Now that's just an exa example number here that's nothing really based in reality, but having things like criticals be really and the windup itself does make this hole do a lot better and does make it do a lot more damage, at least on paper here. So... For the reasons I discussed, the other three specials we're going to equip are going to be something such as Desolation Warheads, and this is going to increase your damage quite dramatically because it increases your projectile speed as well as increasing your splash. Explosive damage, whatever, we don't have to deal with that one. If you do not have Desolation Warheads, it's perfectly fine to put on High Explosive Shells 4. It does very similar, although not quite as good in a few, few categories. Go ahead and stick that one on there. I talked about criticals a little bit too, and we're going to want to use PBX Payload, which is the best critical special that is not limited to any sort of just skirmish holes, say. This can go on anything. It has a the, the standard chance here, 20%, and then your 12% from R&D, so 32% chance total at doubling your damage that you do, which seems pretty great. By the way, this plus 100 depth charge critical, critical damage does not replace the already inherent one in the game, so it's not doing 3 extra damage, it's still just doing 2 extra damage. This last slot is going to be something that deals a little bit more with just concussive in general, and it's going to be one of the new ones that came out with a hole, which is going to be Zip Drive Y. This thing has a 40% reload compared to the X at a 50%, but does more damage. As I already talked about, damage is great. A few other uh, weapons, or specials rather, that you would actually want to equip in a few cases would be things such as, let's make sure things can't stack, so let's go to Agility System 4 and search Concussive. Things such as the Siege Reloader 2, which give you, it looks like, a reload of... I'm actually not sure that this does... Okay, it gives you plus 15% concussive reload. That might be an option. 
Countermeasure Loaders 4 will give you plus 25% concussive reload. That's better. CMCTO Reloader will give you plus 80 plus 45% concussive reload. And you can always just do something for more damage, like concussive upgrade, or better yet, concussive force. These things will all help out a little bit. Note that with Resonance Capacitator, there is nothing, or Capacitor, there is nothing to actually trigger this. It's not actually going to work. It needs to be triggered by a tactical field, such as, say, a navigation array, which you're not using in your base. But if we do get something in the future that you are using that for, it may be worthwhile using this. But as of right now, it's not really worth that. Now, once we look at our total reload here, you can see that I do have under the attacking section, I have a concussive reload of 40% and the base reload time here is six seconds. That of course will get dropped to you know, closer to 1.5 seconds when you actually have this thing fully ranked up. And your 1.5 seconds plus your 200% bonus reload this can get up to plus the 40% on the whole will have a firing time which is much, much lower than you would have right now. You should expect a 0.44, so close to minimum reload time actually, about double that. You don't really have to worry about that too much. All right, here is the build for, now we've discussed that. This is pretty much the final build I am going to be showing for the Badger. The one I may build in my base is going to vary a little bit. I plan to have one out front with one of the sync drives on there, so it stops. I think I'll go with a blue sync drive. And everything else should be pretty standard, not a lot of other changes you want to make. This hole basically serves two purposes. It serves to do damage to the enemy, as well as to have an aura that makes anyone that gets close to them a little bit weaker, and does that either through staying stationary or chasing them down. Of course, this is all in practice. I haven't actually redeemed these last two specials from the raid yet, and I have yet to really see it in action too much in people's bases. A few people have coined this. Unfortunately, I don't have any video of that that I've seen in the game. Uh, and I haven't, don't have one in my base. I haven't hit enough bases this week to actually show you any video, video footage of that. I'm gonna, going to go ahead and say thank you everyone so much for watching. Like I said, if this was helpful, go ahead and share it with someone in your alliance. And as always, this is Derpy signing out, helping you be a better pirate.